Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, neuropsychology, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who has been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here in Mind Brain Talks, I discuss and describe different topics from psychology and neurosciences and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand and for you to learn something more about it. All research here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So today I'll talk about cognitive dissonance. Probably you already have heard something about this. On the internet there are lots of different definitions about cognitive dissonance, however some of them are pretty inaccurate. So here I will give to you a scientifically accurate take on cognitive dissonance based on the former author, ok? But first let's see the manuals that I recommend to you. So let's go! So now let's look to the manuals that I recommend to you today. The first is A Theory of Cognitive Dissonance from Leon Festinger, which is the first author to propose this theory. The second book is The Cognitive Dissonance 50 Years of a Classic Theory from Joel Cooper. And the third is Cognitive Dissonance Re Examine a Pivotal Theory in Psychology. So, and now let's see what is cognitive dissonance. Individuals are driven by internal drives, urges, and or needs that motives internal and external actions. When individuals face different or opposite chunks of information in memory, tends to have a sense of extrangeness and affective discomfort. In this sense, some internal and external maneuvers may take place to deal with this strangeness. This means that individuals tend to experience some discomfort when they are dealing with opposite views or opposite beliefs. So, cognitive dissonance is used to describe the feelings of discomfort that result from two contradictory beliefs. When there is a discrepancy between beliefs and behaviors, something must change in order to eliminate or reduce the dissonance because the discomfort tends to increase. Liam Festinger published in 1957 a book called A Theory of Cognitive Dissonance. He stated that people experience discomfort when they hold conflict beliefs or when their actions contradict their previous beliefs. Some examples that Festinger gave in his book, for instance, smoking even knowing that is bad for health, or individuals may promote some behavior but not apply it to oneself. This is also called hypocrisy. Another example may be a person that defends animal rights but continues to eat meat in their meals. This is also called the meat paradox. We can talk about this in the future. So, why people have cognitive dissonance? Because humans have a principle of cognitive consistency or self-coherence, which is the principle or the psychological need, we can talk about this in the future, or the psychological need of coherence between thoughts, emotions, behavior and emotional past learnings. If we have this principle and we have a contradictory beliefs, we tend to experience discomfort that stems from these contradictory positions or two oppositional beliefs. So, as you are seeing, humans tend to experience different levels of discomfort due to discrepancies between beliefs, thoughts, emotions and behaviors. And humans are driven by the coherence principle or the psychological need that is defined as self-coherence. Because of this principle, humans tend to reduce the level of discomfort that stems from oppositional views of different points of the self. And now let's see other factors that tend to be associated with cognitive dissonance. Also, we can find some personality and neurocognitive factors that has impacts on cognitive dissonance. Metacognitive awareness for contradictory information held in memory. Focused attention. Individuals may focus attention on these two chunks of information or these two beliefs. Lower tolerance for uncertainty. Lower frustration tolerance. Or even lower self coherence as opposed to self coherence. We have a dialectical pole 
of psychological need, which is a self-coherence and self-incoherence, and if individuals are able to experience these two oppositional beliefs without discomfort, this is linked to um, psychological health and mental health. I will talk about this phenomenon in the future because we can have seven polarities of psychological needs that are fundamental or are essential for psychological health. I am a researcher on this area and then I will talk about these specifically in the future, okay? So now let's move on. We can also find other factors that may be associated with cognitive dissonance, such as type of beliefs, when we think about a surface level. The value of those beliefs may also be important to understand why individuals experience some degree of discomfort. And other factor that is associated with cognitive dissonance is the size of the disparity between beliefs. If we have two major beliefs that are in opposition, individuals tend to experience even more discomfort, okay? And finally, when we look to a deeper level, we may have some contradictory self-facets, which is responsible for a deeper dissonance or inner comfort. When we are looking to this at a deeper level, okay? Don't worry, in the future I will talk about these uh, different levels of human mind that tend to have different levels of dissonance. When we talk about dissonance on beliefs, we are talking about a surface level. But however, when we are talking about contradictory or oppositional personality traits or self-facets, we are talking about a deeper level of cognitive dissonance or affective dissonance that tends to promote internal conflicts, okay? This is a deeper level of analysis and typically this is a level of analysis that psychotherapists tend to focus, okay? Moreover, we can find some different effects of cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance causes feelings of discomfort and unease and humans have an innate desire to avoid discomfort because this discomfort impacts on behaviors and actions, thoughts and decisions, emotions and feelings, beliefs and attitudes. And as I said before, cognitive dissonance is associated with mental health, especially uh, when individuals feel anxious, guilt, ashamed, confused or reject due to their levels of cognitive dissonance. So, as you are seeing, cognitive dissonance impacts on different spheres of human experience. And now let's see the coping mechanisms and the mental defenses that individuals tend to use to reduce the discomfort that stems from cognitive dissonance. So, individuals may hide their genuine beliefs and beliefs from others. Individuals may use rationalization of their choices to match previous assumptions. Also, individuals may avoid subjects or teams that activate discussions of their contradictory opinions. And individuals may also try to avoid learning new information, because this may increase their levels of discomfort. Also, individuals may devaluate, attack or deny others' actions and beliefs that are contradictory to their own. Individuals may also discard research, newspaper articles or expert explanations. And individuals may distort information to fit their previous beliefs or schemas. In the future I'll talk about schemas because I am a researcher on this specific area, okay? So I have lots of insight knowledge that I want to share with you. So, some authors gave some suggestions about how to reduce cognitive dissonance. One is harmonization of contradictory beliefs by focused on the healthier belief. Another suggestion is adopt beliefs and attitudes who are internally coherent. Another suggestion is evaluate both beliefs who are in contradiction and learn to tolerate this conflict. And the final suggestion is change the belief to match the previous belief system. So, as you are seeing here, there is an increasing level of difficulty in applying these suggestions to oneself. Changing beliefs, typically, it's not an easy task, okay? However, this is the suggestions that some authors gave. And now let's just summarize the contents of today. So, we saw that cognitive dissonance is a mental phenomenon that humans tend to have when they find contradictory or oppositional beliefs. 
typically is associated with personality and neurocognitive factors. Individuals tend to develop some coping mechanisms and mental defenses to try to deal with the discomfort that stems from this dissonance. And there are different ways to reduce cognitive dissonance, and some are easy and some are more difficult. Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description regarding today's theme in order to see the manuals and the books that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing here, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You can use the comment section below to express your thoughts and to express your mind. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!